This episode of The Therapy Show is sponsored by Therapy Notes. Why not find out what more than 100,000 mental health professionals already know and try Therapy Notes for two months absolutely free. Just click on the link in the show notes or enter promo code LISA at therapynotes.com. Welcome to the Therapy Show podcast. I'm your host, Lisa Mustard. In each episode, I interview a seasoned and knowledgeable talk therapist from the counseling world to glean valuable insights, techniques, and tools that you can apply to your practice and your life. And if you're considering a career in the counseling field or just want to hear about what it's like to be a talk therapist, then this is the podcast for you. Well, hey, friends, welcome back to another episode. I'm excited to share with you a follow up to the episode I just did recently with Kim Tolson. And that one is titled How to Successfully Integrate AI into Your Therapy Practice with Kim Tolson. And she she talks all about um, how we as therapists can use AI in our businesses. And after our conversation, I got really curious about getting on chat GPD. GPT and using it for myself. So what I did was after a conversation, I went ahead and purchased the uh, upgraded to the paid version of chat GPD and I GPT. I can't know if I'm ever going to be able to say that all together, but I update upgraded to the paid version of chat GPT. And I started to play around with it kind of like what Kim was saying in the episode. And I wanted to share with you five different prompts that I came up with or five, actually five prompts that chat GPT recommended to me for therapists and how to use uh, AI in our, um, in our private practice. So, but before I dive into that, I want to remind you that all of my pod courses, all 15 of them are now available for $30. So you can get the pod course bundle over on my website, which is lisamustard.com forward slash pod courses. And you will see a button that says purchase all the pod courses for $30. Now in the future, that price will be going up. So go ahead and purchase it now because any pod courses that I add in the future will be added to that bundle at no extra charge to you. So if I add, you know, one more course, you you aren't going to be charged. If I add five more courses, you're not going to be charged So go ahead and lock into that $30 for all the pod courses now before it goes up because it is going to go up in the fall. I'm not sure yet when, but, um, I can tell you it will be more than likely before, um, Labor Day. So go ahead and get in there and purchase that bundle. Okay. So what are the five different prompts that I came up with, or actually chat GPT came up with? So let me tell you about the first one. So the first thing that chat GPT can do is help us understand specific therapeutic techniques. For example, a therapist could type in, or type in and ask chat GPT, can you help me understand how cognitive behavioral therapy techniques can be effectively utilized for a client struggling with anxiety and panic attacks? What are some possible exercises or strategies we can work through? And in response, chat GPT might offer explanations of exposure therapy, cognitive restructuring, or relaxation techniques that could be useful for the client. Now, before I go any further with this, I definitely want to say that just because you are a therapist and chat GPT gives you these suggestions, then it's not instantly make you an expert (laughs) in these techniques, right? So we're all adults here. We all uh, know our ethics. We all know what the, our scope of practice is. So just because chat GPT suggests it doesn't mean that you should run out and do it with your client. So take all of this with just for, um, for informational purposes, and you're just kind of playing around with what it might add to what you're currently doing. And if you don't know how to use the techniques, then get supervision, then, you know, do some training. Um, but don't definitely don't just listen to what chat GPT says. Okay. Because it's still not perfect. It's still, you know, still has error in it. So that's my disclaimer for anything that you're going to find on chat GPD. Okay. Always remember that first. So when I typed that in, I was really amazed at what came up, what chat GPT came back with for me. It's pretty, pretty amazing. And you can even get in there, like Kim was saying in the episode, you can get in there. And if you know your, your client doesn't like guided imagery or doesn't like meditation, then you can ask, you can tell chat GPT client does not like this type of technique. So please exclude it for this client. 
Okay. I thought that was really neat. The second thing that chat GPT came up with, it said it can assist in formulating questions to help explore a client's self-perception. So you might ask it, I have a new client who's struggling with self-esteem issues. Can you generate some questions that I could use during our sessions? And chat GPT could then suggest questions like, what are three personal strengths you believe you possess? Or how do you react when you make a mistake to help the therapist gain insights into the client's self-perception? Now, once again, the disclaimer is, you know, you should have some background in this. You should have some training in it before you use any of these um, types of uh, options for therapy. Okay. But I thought it was really cool because it might generate some questions that you hadn't thought of or generate questions that you could then like kind of keep to the side or in the, in your notes or in that client folder, if you ever kind of needed to help go a little bit further or deeper with that client. I thought that was a really, really cool way to use chat GPT. Okay, the third way that you can use chat GPT, it can provide explanations of complex therapeutic modalities. For instance, could you provide me with an explanation of the fundamentals of eye movement desensitization and reprocessing, or as we all know, EMDR therapy? And it might offer a breakdown of the eight phases of EMDR or suggest practical examples of its use in trauma therapy. Now, I don't need to tell you guys, don't go and do EMDR if you haven't been trained in it. Just don't, right? You know better. Okay. The fourth one, but imagine you could you could use that for other complex therapeutic modalities. I mean, you could throw in there asking about IFS or even the Gottman method or um, emotionally focused therapy. I mean, you could throw in anything in there and it's really going to give you a breakdown of the fundamentals. Um, I think that's that's pretty cool. Try Therapy Notes, the number one rated electronic health record system available today. With live telephone support seven days a week, it's clear why Therapy Notes is rated 4.9 out of five stars on Trustpilot.com and Google. Therapy Notes makes billing, scheduling, note taking, and telehealth incredibly easy. And now, for all you prescribers out there, Therapy Notes is proudly introducing ePrescribe. And if you're coming from another electronic health record, Therapy Notes makes the transition quite simple, importing your demographic data free of charge so you can get going right away. So why not find out what more than 100,000 mental health professionals already know and try Therapy Notes for two months absolutely free. Just click on the link in the show notes or enter the promo code LISA at therapynotes.com. Try it today with no strings attached and see why everyone is switching to Therapy Notes. Okay, the fourth way you can use it is it can be helpful in preparing group therapy sessions. So you could ask it, I'm seeing an increase in clients dealing with workplace stress. Can you provide an outline for a possible group therapy session that focuses on developing coping strategies and building resilience? And ChatGPT actually gave me an outline of sessions incorporating stress management techniques, role-playing exercises, and group discussions. So like Kim also said in her episode that it really can give you this amazing outline for group therapy or even coaching, whatever it is that you need, but you just plug in what you're looking for and it's going to, it's going to give you an outline. Okay. Pretty, pretty amazing. All right. And last but not least, it can support in the developing of a treatment plan or the, I'm sorry, it can support you in the development of a treatment plan. So you could ask chat GPT, I need some help to create a treatment plan for a patient suffering from severe social anxiety. Can you provide some guidance? And from there, it could suggest steps, including initial rapport building, psychoed, skills training, cognitive restructuring, exposure therapy, and maintenance. And actually I did, I did plug that one into chat GPT and it gave me an entire treatment plan. Now, of course I would take that treatment plan and make it you know, specific and focused on that client. And I would definitely only use the things that I understood and that I felt were in my scope of competence with that client. And if I saw something in there that I was curious about and maybe didn't quite know what to do with it, I would definitely seek out help, training, supervision, all that good stuff. So just remember, I'm not suggesting that you use these things blindly because chat GPT said you could, right? No, all I'm saying is that chat GPT can really help kind of make things more efficient for you when it comes to your administration. It can help make better use, uh, maybe help with your time management because, you know, you're busy seeing clients. The last thing you want to do is spend five to 10 hours on the weekends or whenever you do your notes or your treatment plans, 
you know, catching up on those things. So really you can use it as a tool to help make your workflow more effective, efficient, more, you know, smoother, fluid, all of those things. So I just wanted to follow up on the episode with Kim because I thought it was really cool, really helpful. I love the fact that she has this clinical AI club where, you know, I think it's $9 a month. You can join and you can get documentation help. You can get um, business help. I mean, what was the other thing? Records and treatment plan. I mean, all of that stuff she's going to teach, you know, every month um, on a new topic and even for your business, even for, I think she's going to cover some marketing and business plan stuff too. So pretty cool stuff. I, um, I would just encourage you to get on there when you have time to play with it. Don't be afraid of it. And um, I was really nervous about using it in the beginning. Cause I don't know, I just, I have this thing about it and it, it does, it does kind of one of those things that could keep me up at night and has me worried about the future, but I do see it as a way to help bolster my skill set, help kind of bolster what I'm doing in session and not take away from doing ethical and, you know, efficient and uh, best evidence practice, or what am I trying to say? I don't feel like it's going to take away from doing work, you know, with, with my ethical code. It's, it's, you know, if I'm working with it hand in hand with that, I don't think that I can, I can go wrong with it. Um, she does mention on that episode concerns about, you know, PHI, she does cover that in her course and in her membership. And of course, don't put any PHI in chat GPT, do not do it because, you know, that would be, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put any, actually, I wouldn't even give it too much information about myself, <laughs> about like, what type of therapist I am. I didn't want to put too much in it because I want to definitely be able to control a lot of the information, but that's just me. That's just me. So anyway, I hope you guys found these prompts helpful. Go ahead and play around with it. Just see what it can do. And, um, and I get it. If you're a little hesitant, you're a little concerned, you know, I'm right there with you because it is something new. It is something different, but if we can see it as a way to help make our, our lives and our jobs a little bit easier, a little bit more um, efficient, then I am going to give it a try. All right, you guys, I hope you have a, a great rest of your day and I hope to hear you, uh, not hear you, you hear me on the show soon. And don't forget if you are loving this podcast and if you want to recommend it to your friends, please do. I think that is the best form of a compliment that you could give me. And don't forget to subscribe to the show if you aren't already. Thanks so much. And I will talk to you guys soon. The Therapy Show with Lisa Mustard is edited and engineered by Chelsea Weaver. If you're looking to start a podcast or ready to take the editing off of your plate, be sure to visit ChelseaWeaverPodcasting.com. Well, that wraps up another episode of The Therapy Show with Lisa Mustard. I know there are hundreds of thousands of podcasts out there, and I'm thankful you've chosen to listen to mine. Be sure to visit LisaMustard.com to access the show notes and discover more fantastic content. And I'd be grateful if you subscribe to the show. Thank, Thank you. you.